You're an horrible cunt. You know what isn't horrible? Season three of The Boys. It is phenomenal. And I am very excited for everyone to meet the real me. Season one was great, really enjoyed it. Season two sort of built on that momentum and also was a bit more daring. Season three takes that daring ceiling and pushes it to the stratosphere. It is brilliant. Okay, it's well, what is it about? Well, the entire season, I suppose, you could wrap up in the the phrase "sins of a father." Um, I don't want to give too many spoilers away, but we all know that Butcher's father and um, what he's done to Butcher. They sort of expand on, and you can kind of see that Butcher, who is raising um, his dead ex-wife's child, Ryan, whose father is Homelander, whoo, um, he is kind of doing to him, to his child, kind of what was done to him. Um, there are, again, themes of fatherhood with Homelander, also trying to find Ryan and be a father to him, and also Mother's Milk, um, he has a daughter. He is treating her in a certain way that might be good or bad, depending on what side of the fence as far as politics, left or right, um, you are on. And it does a very good job of expanding, extrapolating, and unpacking um, the idea that a father can really leave an impact and damaging impact on um, a child. So I thought that was really well done. That theme was great in this. The acting is once again superb. I can't stress that enough. Everyone goes on about Homelander. Um, and there's a really good reason why. Anthony Starr is, is brilliant in this. There's one scene where he literally talks to himself. He's having a kind of breakdown. Um, and one side, he's being the vulnerable. I need a father. No one actually loves me. I don't love myself. I've got nothing. I'm a piece of garbage. And then you have the opposite side, the sort of more evil side, saying, you are brilliant. You can be what the fuck you want, kind of thing. And him sort of crying and then laughing and crying. And, and the, the, the sort of facial gestures of Anthony Starr throughout the entire season is he's worthy of an Emmy nomination. So I'll be very surprised. Well, I won't because it's the Emmys. <laughs> I mean, they fucking love me. Um, but he definitely deserves a nod. As does Carl Urban. He does a very good job in this as Butcher. Somebody who wants to do the good thing or the right thing but can't seem to get to that point. Uh, at the end of season two, we saw that um, V, I think it's called, is a drug which can turn normal human beings into superheroes. And he gets hold of this. And um, I think this is in season episode two, sorry, where he says something along the lines of, and this kind of great power leads you to being an horrible cunt, which is absolutely true. Um, a couple of other characters take this and they turn into assholes as well. <laughs> it is, like I say, a really great season for character development in this, as it is for writing. Um, I was left, and I'm glad about the formatting, um, just to quickly jump in there. A lot of people don't like the one week thing, you know, when it drops three episodes in the first um, day, and then you have five weeks um, to, to watch the rest of the season. Only eight episodes a season. That's probably the only bad thing about the whole damn show. Um, I like the fact that it is, it's weekly because you get to unpack and think about what you've watched. I also love the advertising and marketing team behind this. I know Amazon's got all the money in the world, but they did a really great job. Not only did they have a Vought International Twitter handle, which looks very much like any GOP or Republicans Twitter handle, quite frankly, um, acting like they are actually Vought International. And, and spewing garbage and propaganda. They put a lot of videos out there that usually you can only see on um, X, um, X-Ray. So if you're watching um, Amazon and you pause something, you can see like the character profiles. Um, you can also see videos. So with Soldier Boy, for example, paid brilliantly by Jensen Eccles, another excellent character to bring into this um, show. Um, he has a whole song that you can actually watch. It only features about 20 seconds in the actual season. But if you go and... Um, have a look on, on the Vought International Twitter handle. You can see a five-minute version. And they do that with a couple of characters um, throughout this. So it's worth looking um, on social media, you know, e-weekly. And it, that comes with a price that you don't want to have spoilers, so you have to make sure you keep up to date with it. Um, so again, that's why I love the, the one weekly episode um, <clears throat> roll now. Other things to point out in this, the um, as I mentioned, the character development leads to certain places, um, and they have some absolutely insane things taking place. I mean, the first episode, which I watched with my girlfriend, in hindsight probably wasn't a good idea. She wasn't climatized to how hectic and um, violent and sexual the show is. I mean, the first opening scene kind of has a character called, I think it's Might, walking up the pe penis of a, of, of a character um, whilst tickling it, um, and then sneezing because he's been doing cocaine, and exploding the person that was in. That's it. Obviously, it's a spoiler for the first episode, but quite frankly, we're nine weeks into when the show landed. If you haven't seen that, I'm terribly sorry. I'll put a spoiler warning at the beginning. But the show really does expand on that. It's a horrendous show, in fact. They have um, Orgasm Fest, I forget the name of it, um, where they, they literally um, have superheroes, and it's the 70th anniversary of Orgasm Fest, or Orgasm Fest, I forget the name of it. And... Um, yeah, what takes place in that, my God, they built that up massively on real-world social media, too, and I think to a very good end, um, brilliantly done. Very, like I say, naughty. 
Um, the fighting in this is really notched up because at the, in season one and two, you've got Homelander who is this really formidable character. How are you going to fight against him? So you have the introduction of Soldier Boy and um, with Butch, Butcher now you know, amped on drugs, the two of them going against um, Homelander is just amazing to watch. It really is so much fun. And like I say, you really feel the impacts of the punches and the laser beams and all that kind of thing. Really, really um, brilliant special effects in this. The soundtrack as well, excellent. Um, I actually noticed for the first time, I think, in, in a series, the colouring of the show. It's really well done. Um, I think the reason I noticed this is because I'm also watching Terminal List with um, Chris Pratt in. And that's a very dark show, a lot of blues and very dark. I, I actually was playing with the contrast of my computer, um, thinking it was just actually just too dark, but it wasn't. It was a, it's a show, um, so that's terminal list. Whereas the boys, they go for a lot of different color palettes depending on what's going on with the characters' moods. So you have yellows, blues, reds, greens. Really, really um, beautiful to actually look at. Other notable characters to point, of course, um, is Jack Quaid. He plays Huey, really great in this. He's a lot of fun. He's kind of the everyman, um, even though he does things that, of course, not every man can do. Another favorite character of mine is The Deep, played by um, Chase Crawford. Again, if you go onto social media and you go onto the um, Vault International, you'll see a whole bunch of little videos of his. I think it's called um, The Deep, or Thinking Deep with The Deep. And he comes up with these really dumb motivational things like, if you put a tea bag in the sea, you'll have very weak tea. That kind of thing. So you got a lot of social media stuff between each episode, which again, makes us more than just a television show or whatever, streaming show. Kimiko and Frenchie too, I loved the um, the deep dive into their relationship. You, you learn a lot more about Frenchie and what made, makes him the way he is. And Kimiko, wow, she's a fa she's an amazing actress. Both of these these two are, they are absolutely stunning, so definitely worth pointing those two out. Um, I have mentioned um, Mother's Milk earlier, but damn, he's good. He really brings actually the heart. I mentioned that, um, you know, Huey is kind of the everyman, but as far as the heart of the team, and this is actually spelt out clearly, you are literally the heart of the team. If it wasn't for you, everyone would leave. Um, and he, he does a really amazing role of this. Um, the actor is absolutely brilliant. Um, Les Olsen does an extremely great job of bringing that heart. And as I mentioned earlier, he has a kid and he is the father of, the, of said kid. He wants to bring her up in a way um, that's correct, but she's living with a stepdad. And that stepdad is basically a staunch Republican, if you want to just get it out there and say it. And he's not. Um, and yeah, it's just the, the, the dynamics between the characters in this show is really great. You can believe it very, very um, easily too. Um, just going back to the whole politics in this, again, on the social media side of things, I don't know if it was an artificially generated tweet, but someone tweeted at the boys account saying they just watched the second episode, or I think it was a fourth episode when a particular character gets killed and they're like, oh, I see this is a political show. Oh my God. If you're that dense and this is actually a real person, seek help. It's been a political show from the beginning, okay? If you cannot see that Homelander stands for America and its superiority, but it's actually not superior because it's so corrupt with power, then you're really stupid, okay? And that goes through the entire show. They take the piss out of the woke, they take the piss out of the left and the right, okay? No one is left off the um, chopping block in the show. And I love that. I mean, it's done very well. And I think, yes, obviously a lot of people out there who will look at the show and say, oh, that's a good woke agenda. Um, it's based on a, on a graphic novel from a while ago. It's just a pity that the world is turning into said graphic novel. Anyway, so I'll just round it up over there. Anything else I wanted to quickly say about this? Uh, no, not anything actually, other than Jensen Ackles. I know a lot of people, myself included, were a bit worried about bringing a character that had literally 18 episodes or 18 years, 20 years? of Supernatural under his belt and a very, you know, character, sort of stereotypical character. He breaks out of that so easily. Um, He's a very naughty boy in this show. Very, very naughty. I'm giving this a 9.5 out of 10. I don't do that very often. It's absolutely brilliant. I think the only downside to it is the fact that there was only eight episodes. But yeah, go and watch it. It's on Amazon right now.